to Creative Spirit Gathering. And this month we've been focusing on community, many different aspects of community. And today we're going to be focusing on forgiveness and gratitude. For many of us, um, as we have worked last week in setting clear boundaries, um, we might be noticing where those boundaries are getting crossed. And I don't know about you, but whenever I take the time to spiritually focus on something from a mental perspective, um, the universe has this lovely way of bringing it into my life experience so that I can process it more deeply and fully. So I'm usually given the opportunity to move from simply thinking about something to experiencing it. And when I have that opportunity, um, there is truly the path for transformation before me. Um, as much as when it shows up, such as I'm going to set my personal boundaries and then feeling those boundaries get crossed, I don't like it um, for the record. <laughs> when I have those experiences, it doesn't feel comfortable. It doesn't feel pleasant. And I'm sure um, you can relate, right? If, if you think that a change um, is challenging, you know, go ahead and raise your hand, make a little comment in the chat bar. Um, if you think that change is simply uh, this fun and lovely process in your life, always um, best of luck to you. <laughs> and please send me a message and let me know how you do that. Um, in my personal experience, it is an opportunity for growth and growth usually means some discomfort. Now, for many of us right now in our lives, we are experiencing discomfort on levels that we have not experienced um, maybe ever. There are so many spaces where change is happening. Change is happening on a global level, change is happening on individual levels, change is happening in communities. We are seeing so much change all at once and it's going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. So what do we do when our boundaries get crossed? First of all, I want you to start to notice what happens when your boundaries are crossed. And for those of you who weren't here last week or didn't see last week's a video, I invite you to go back and watch that one because knowing your personal boundaries, knowing what makes you comfortable, what makes you feel safe is really important. And when our boundaries get crossed, it can bring up lots of emotions. Um, show of hands again, or, or leave a message in the comment. What's a key for you that your boundary has been crossed? If somebody has stepped over your boundary and now you are not feeling safe in that relationship, what does that feel like in your body? Are you aware of that? Aware of what that might feel like? For some of us, it's anger. You have just, yeah, I'm seeing that in the chat too. You have just crossed my boundary and now I feel angry. For some of us, it's fear this deep fear, my boundary has just been crossed and maybe we retreat because of that fear. For some of us, it's sadness, perhaps it feeling unheard or unvalued or that my boundaries are not important enough to you that you just stepped over them. When we're talking about boundaries and talking about our boundaries feeling crossed in some way, it can bring up a lot of very powerful emotions. Now, I don't know about you, um, but I don't like feeling those powerful <laughs> emotions. It usually feels uncomfortable. It can feel gritty and painful. So when those feelings come up, we need a way to process them and move through them because one way of dealing with emotions and feelings is to shove them aside, right? I don't really feel that, I'm going to ignore it. I don't wanna deal with the anger or the sadness, but it doesn't go away, right? When you shove something in a closet, it doesn't disappear. Um, I've, I've got some bags of clothes that I've been wanting to donate that are sitting in my storage room down in the basement. Um, 
I keep thinking, you know, they're just going to magically make their way over to Goodwill. They don't. <laughs> if I ignore them, they don't go away. So when we take these things that we don't want anymore and we just shove them in a closet somewhere, they don't go away. We actually have to make that next step to process it. So our art journals are a place where we can process whatever's coming up for you. So um, one thing that I love to do to process is to play with paint with my fingers. Um, those of you who are squeamish about that idea um, could use a glove, but I really love the tactile, like shoving my hands in it. And I will literally take those little craft bottles, you know, those little two ounce ones that you get at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something. And I just squirt the paint right on the page. <laughs> And then I just run my fingers through it and it can be a way to simply presence and process whatever's coming up. I also pick up the phone. I call a friend and I let them know, hey, look, this is happening. In fact, I had the opportunity this week, as I said, um, universe helping me to process my own lessons here um, to pick up the phone and call a friend and say, you know, this experience here is making me angry. Something just happened that angered me. And my friend's first response was, <laughs> you know, sometimes anger shows up to tell us that our boundaries have been crossed. Really, that happened, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh yeah, that's why this is showing up. And so I thought, you know, I've got my friends, I've got my journals. I know how to process things, but what's the next step? What's the next step after I acknowledge, oh yeah, my boundary just got crossed and that's why I'm feeling angry. And I believe the next step is learning to forgive. Now, of course, we have to process first because if we just move from, I'm gonna take this anger and I'm gonna shove it in the closet and I'm gonna forgive you, it's okay. Yeah, that's not, that's not true forgiveness. But if I take that anger and I look at it and I go, where were my boundaries crossed? Where did somebody step over the line here? How did that make me feel? So if my personal boundary right now is six feet, let's take that as an example, right? If my personal boundary is six feet, I need you to stay six feet from me for me to feel safe. And somebody crosses that boundary. So I feel angry. Maybe that person did or did not know that I had that boundary set in my mind. Sometimes we set boundaries and we don't communicate them clearly to others. And we still get angry when they step over the line. But regardless of whether or not that person knew, if they stepped over the line, now I feel uncomfortable. So I need to be able to be present enough to my own feelings, to my own emotions, to be able to acknowledge when that person stepped over my boundary, which was six feet in this case, it made me feel unsafe. It made me feel vulnerable. So what I need to do is clearly communicate to them, when you do this, when you step over the six foot boundary, I feel unsafe. What I need to feel safe is for you to honor that boundary that I've set. But before we can get to that, before we can have that conversation, we need to be clear with ourselves, you know, what was happening. Because a lot of times what happens is somebody steps over that boundary and we start pointing fingers and blame and shame and, and we go into spirals rather than being present enough to process what we do need to feel safe. Now, again, I'm not saying if that person keeps stepping over your boundaries and keeps pushing your buttons, to um, agree with what's happening. I want you to stand up for your boundaries, but to be able to be present and clearly communicate what's coming up for you. And again, using your journals to process what's coming up and move into that next stage. Now, I mentioned the word forgiveness. And for some of us, especially when we move into feelings of anger or blame um, towards other. Forgiveness can be really challenging. 
But when we think on forgiveness, what I want you to think about is the idea of giving something in exchange for. Giving something in exchange for. The forgiveness is for us, first and foremost. It is to release any hold that we have on another person or an experience or community. Anything that is going to cause us pain. Um, Edwin Gaines has a line that I love in her book, The Four Spiritual Laws of um, uh, Prosperity. And in it, she talks about anger and forgiveness. And she says, you may have a right to your anger. And I'm sure we've all been in these spaces where anger has arisen and we will fight for that anger. We will defend it tooth and nail. They cross my boundary. They know better. I have a right to this anger. And in her book, Edwin says this, perhaps you have a right to your anger and you also have the right to take a screwdriver and stick it in an electrical socket. But what good does that do you, right? We don't practice forgiveness for the benefit of the other guy, this is her words. We do it for ourselves. So when we notice that anger arising, it is up to us to process it, remove that attachment to that which is causing us pain and move into that forgiveness, giving love, giving a blessing, giving peace to the other person regardless of their actions. Again, not saying, I think what you did is right, or I think your opinion is right, I think your perspective is right, Simply, I'm acknowledging you as another human being. And as a human being, I can send you love. I can send you love. So we're looking past one particular piece. And as the universe would have it, <laughs> um, something popped up in my Facebook newsfeed this week that really resonated with me in terms of this processing anger and moving into forgiveness. And it's the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. For those of you that are familiar with his work, for those of you who aren't, let me go ahead and pull up the Four Agreements. The first is be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity, say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself. And that's important too, because forgiveness means self-forgiveness as well and not to gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Number two is don't take anything personally. Ah, so easy to say and hard to do. Nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. Number three, don't make assumptions. Again, especially important when we're talking about our boundaries. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Let people know those boundaries. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstanding, sadness, or drama. And with this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. Number four is always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. And under any circumstance, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. And I would again turn that towards how we treat others. So as we are impeccable with our word, we don't take things personally, we don't make assumptions, and we always strive to do our best we can also affirm that others are doing the same, that they are leaning into doing their best based on their experience, their boundaries, their idea of reality in the present moment. So practicing acknowledging emotions, recognizing them, notice where they are in your body. Notice what triggered them, what boundaries are crossed, who crossed them and how. What do we need to feel safe? Moving into forgiveness as we can, 
Again, sometimes this process takes a little while. And from there, we can move into gratitude. Now, again, in the moment, and I, I, will, I will claim this myself, in the moment when I was triggered, when somebody crossed my boundary and I got angry, I was not ready to forgive yet. I was not ready to be grateful for the experience yet. These things take processing and they take time. And so I want to give you permission right now to be human, to experience the emotions of being human, to experience all of it, but to know that within you is the ability and the capability to move into that spirit of divine love that can move past any circumstance, that can strengthen your sense of safety and protection right where you are, regardless of those boundaries, as we move into divine love, we feel that greater sense of connection. We can move into forgiveness. We can move through whatever feelings arise and move into gratitude. Gratitude for all of the blessings, even those blessings and those changes and transformation pieces that feel yucky. So in your journal today, I invite you to simply get messy because life is messy. And right now we are moving through one of the messiest, muckiest, yuckiest feeling experience kind of time. And for some of us, you know, we're moving through these waves so quickly that we're not even aware, we're not processing because we're moving from one emotion to another, you know, like in a five minute time span. If it's just me, maybe it's just me, but I'm going to call it out there for perhaps some others. I'm seeing head shaking in the room, so I'm feeling I'm not alone in this. So as we process life's messiness on the page, we can get greater clarity in our lives. Now, I shared with you one way that I do that, which is simply presencing an emotion through finger painting with craft paint. So you could do something like this in your journal. And I wanted to share one other journal page. This is probably one of my messiest moments in my journal. I mean, even just looking at it, do you feel peaceful? <laughs> it was a big old mess. And how I processed this was first through writing. So the background was just pen and ink, writing out what I was feeling, what that energy was. And then I started taking, I had separate pages that this was on. I took one of those pages, I tore it up, and I simply used masking tape to put it in. And it wasn't even a neat cutout. It wasn't, um, you know, glue stick or Mod Podge. It was just get it down there, whatever felt right in the moment. And using my fingers again to simply smear paint around. And then once that dried, writing on top of it, um, those messages that were coming to me, this time using crayon and markers. So however you wish to process your mess, I give you permission today to simply be present to what is. Be present to what is arising in you in this moment. Let all of those emotions, all of life have a space in your journal that it can be processed, that you can move through that and allow space for forgiveness and gratitude to arise in your being. So we're about to move into our meditation time. And before we do, I just want to invite our online uh, viewers or those viewing in the future and to help support this program through your love offerings and donations. You can give on our website at unityartsministry.org. So wherever you are, whether you're at home in your art studio or in your kitchen, or you're resting outside, I invite you to take a moment to get your body comfortable. If you're seated, feel your feet on the floor. And take a couple of deep breaths here, just presencing. You've covered a lot, so your minds are full. Your hearts are probably 
full, all of this energy. So we simply allow the breath to bring us into a state of calm, relaxation, closing your outer eyes. Begin to bring awareness to your breath without trying to control or change anything. Simply notice the inhale and notice the exhale. And with this awareness, let your body relax. Let any tightness in your muscles simply ease, release that tension. Allow your mind to relax, releasing thoughts and plans. And then drop your awareness down into your heart space. Let yourself feel the peace and the presence of divine love right here and now in this moment. Letting the breath bring you deeper into the silence, to relaxation. Breathing in, breathing out, we rest. On the next breath, begin to bring your awareness back to the present moment and taking with you this peace of divine love. Let this be your strength as you move through your journal process today, knowing that it is safe to process, to feel, to explore all that it is to be human and all that it is to be a spiritual being having this human experience. As we open our eyes, we affirm the truth of our being. I am divine love. I am strong. I am capable. I am loving. We allow ourselves to move through our journal process now, exploring however we wish to explore messiness of life on the messiness on the page. Thank you for joining us, and I will see you for our check-in in just a little while. <laughs>